So this third task is about a pump that lifts up a certain amount of water into a container that is uh, 25 meters higher and the efficiency of the pump is given by 70% and um, we should calculate the electrical power for some pump for some drive motor um, and the efficiency of the motor is given by 90%. Yeah, so, um, you're, you have a garden somewhere on a hill, um, you have a, a swimming pool with 20 cubic meters and your guests will arrive in, in, in one hour. And so the question is what, what pump do you need to fill the, to fill the swimming pool uh, right on time before your guests arrive? So how... Yeah, how would you? I have tried. Um, so I calculated the work. Okay, so I will call this W. Yeah. And, uh, which is mass mal, uh, times gravity. Okay. Times height. Okay. And so the mass and the gravitational constant, they give force and force multiplied with distance or integrated over distance in a more general way gives us some energy or gives us some work. Okay, and this would be, let's say, the, um, um, yeah, how, how to say it, the, the mechanical energy maybe of the, um, of the water or maybe, yeah, I will, I will use W for water. Okay, we had this before, um, so one cubic meter is the same as a thousand liters and so this corresponds to a thousand kilograms of water with the density calculation that we had before, so we have 20,000 kilograms. Times Okay, I will use uh, 9.81 meter per second squared. Times 25 meters. And times the 25 meter. So we have 4,903,500 uh, kilograms um, times meter squared divided by square seconds, so it's zero. Okay. Uh, what was this? Four million nine hundred three thousand nine hundred three. Okay, and then zero. Okay, ah, okay. And that's the okay, and <laughs> okay, okay. So <laughs> and now we can. Okay, I will write down the unit at first. So this is kilogram. Uh, we have meter and we have another meter. So we have meter squared and we have second squared. And um, yeah, and we could we could say okay, kilogram times meter divided by second square is the same as Newton. So this is one Newton, and if we have one Newton meter, this is the same as Joule. So we can also skip all the stuff here and say this is Joule. Uh -huh. uh, times height. Okay, so uh, P? P is the uh, density, yeah. the volume, times G. Or a gravitational constant. Uh, not volume, but uh, volume stream. Like, uh, yeah, so volume divided by time. Yeah, exactly. Times height. Uh, times the height. Yeah. Yeah. And so I would say now if we say the dum. 
power as we had before power is the energy divided by the time and if we would insert that the mass as we also use the equation before is the same as rho times the volume if you remember what i had written for the first task here um, then it's the very same equation and and of course it should be yeah, so, but we, we could also use this, um, no problem, but, but it's, it's, it, it, we will end up with the same way. But um, what, what we need to do now to get the power, the power that is necessary to lift up the water, um, is we need to divide this energy by time. And... Exactly, so I will say do, 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 do. and instead of one hour, I would also suggest to use uh, 3600 seconds. And then, then we should get, uh, we should get something in a unit watt because um, joule, one, one joule, per second is the same as one watt. And we just need to have the value here and I can also maybe do the calculation here in in octave. And now the sun is shining and if we come all out of the building it will be very warm. Uh, probably not. <laughs> so uh, mass is 20,000, the height is 25, gravitational constant is 9.81 meter per second square. So this energy of the water, uh, as we have said, is mass times gravitational constant times height. And we get this 4,905,000. Okay. And so now the power, uh, the time is 3,600 seconds. And the power that is needed to lift up the water would be this work or this energy divided by the time. And it would be 1,362.5 or 63. I will write it like this, what? Um, yeah, f first question um, is for the first task, d does it sound reasonable from the order of magnitude? More, more or less. Um, difficult to guess, but once again, if we would get some milliwatts or so, it would be strange. Um, if we would get megawatts and gigawatts, it would be also strange because then you would need to call at the power station and say, hey, it, uh, uh, ramp up the your your other reactor i want to turn on my pump to to fill my my swimming pool um yeah so this is something um, um yeah so do, do you know how much power you can get out, uh, from from a typical power outlet in germany exactly uh, three thousand six hundred watts because um, as we had before um, in this task, uh, power is voltage times current. Uh, what is the voltage at our power outlets here? 230. And the maximum current that uh, the fuse usually has is 16 amps. And so if you take 230 times 16, you get something like 3680 uh, watts. And so this here is reasonable because it's something that we could get. Um, we still need the efficiency of the pump and the motor, but this is something that we could get from a normal power outlet. You don't need a huge cable. Okay, um, so how to continue? Also by the, uh, efficiency of the 
exactly so to get the power that goes into the pump Exactly, we do this and divide by the efficiency of the pump and get something and then to get the power of the motor we do the same, take the power of the pump, um, insert this and insert this and divide by the efficiency of the motor. And um, yeah, I can well, yeah, I, I, I can also try to do the calculation here. So the efficiency of the pump was 70% or 0 0.9. The efficiency of the motor was 0 0.9. And so therefore the power of the pump should be the power that is needed to lift up the water divided by the efficiency of the pump. We get this value and the same equation used for the motor then finally gives us this value. So 1950 let's say and 2162 watts. Was this right? Yes, something like this. Oh, better. Three. Yeah, because we could um, we could also um, draw a schematic like this and say the uh, power that goes into the motor. Um, goes into the motor, but the motor has limited uh, efficiency, so there is some power lost. And so then the remaining power will go into the pump. And the pump also has some limited efficiency. So also some power will be, will be lost there. And that's why not all of the um, yeah, the, the electrical power is turned into mechanical power, is turned into power that actually lifts up the water. And so the, yeah, the, the power that we need to insert and input at the beginning must be higher uh, than the power that comes out of the machine. Um, and that's why we need to divide by the efficiency so that the, 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 the result here is larger than the value that we started with. Okay, are there further questions? Yeah. How did we calculate the power pump and the power motor in the motor? Uh, well, the power pump. So this is the power of the pump, this is the power of the motor. We basically just took the power that okay. is needed to lift up the water and divide by the efficiency. Okay, and divide by which number? And the power, the, the um, efficiency of the pump here is this 70%. So this is the value that we used here. And uh, the other value, good question, the other value here is the 90% that are used there. Okay. And I think this is also pretty much what I did here. The values are the 0 0.7 and 0 0.9. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and, and uh, 90% is, is then of course the same as 0 0.7 and here it's the same as 0 0.9. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I can I cannot uh, get rid of writing a comma. So this is from my point of view also something that we we should agree on. To yeah, it's it's always very confusing in 
ISO or IC standards because they these are English documents where you would usually use a dot as a decimal separator, but they also use a comma because they say it's more the in the international physical community the more agreed um, sign to use it as a decimal separator. I, I would say I would not care. Um, the thing is, uh, which is from my point of view much more important if you use dot or comma as a deci decimal separator, don't use any thousand separators. Um, and this is also something that I, I, I find horrible in, in written documents uh, because this really confuses people. If you sometimes, yeah, we would in Germany, we would use sometimes use a dot as a thousand separator because for our, for us, the decimal separator is the comma and for American people it's exactly the other way. Uh, or sometimes we would use this such a high comma. Um, yeah, the, um, the people who publish the, or the Bureau, Bureau International Pons and Measurement, my, my French is not that good, the, the International Committee for Standards in, or for, for Units and Quantities and so on, who published this uh, system, Interna um, International de Unité, in their SI brochure, they have a rule, you should not use a thousand separator, no comma, no dot, no nothing. If you want to, um, in larger numbers, show groups of three digits, then use a space or use a thin space, which is much less confusing people. Yeah, so in the exam, I won't care about if it's a comma or a dot, let's say.